Robert, do you accept? Yes. Um, Robert has accepted the nomination. Um, are there any further nominations for U.S. Senate? Is there objection? Is there objection to close the nomination? Without objection, we will close nomination. Um, so your choices will be Robert Carter's four minutes above, but I will give Robert a, a chance to speak to you. Um, Robert, would you like to uh, speak to the crowd? Or is it possible to have someone who wanted to say some words on my behalf? <laughs> uh, we, we can have a nomination speech if you'd like. Uh, who would you like to speak to? Uh, is Joshua? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Sarvis for the first time, and I thought it was rather interesting that you all actually have an op option to choose none of the above. <laughs> and I must confess, actually, I was, that was the option I hoped, I hoped that you all were choosing at that time. Now, the reason for that is I have seen a number of candidates sort of, you know, put up a yard sign, put up a few, do a few speeches, call it a day, and see what happens. And I thought, well, that's not a particularly good use of resources. Uh, also, I should mention that... Uh, uh, I was a member of the Republican Liber the board of the Republican Liberty Caucus of Virginia, and uh, would, have, would have liked to see. I was a big fan of Ken Cuccinelli, but uh, as time passed, uh, I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Service on a number of occasions on Facebook. Really liked uh, what he stood for uh, in our con the way our conversations were going, and one thing led to another. I began volunteering for his campaign, ended up working for his campaign, and because I felt that was really the thing, the, the right thing to do. Now, of course, uh, as you all know, uh, decisions like that do have consequences, and as a result, I was kicked off the board of, of uh, directors for the Republican Liberty Caucus. <laughs> But there are two points that I would like to make. Again, I do not have a, a vote in this, but um, several points I'd like to make about Robert Sarvis. Number one, of course, many of my Republican friends have come up to me and said, well, you know, Robert Sarvis is secretly funded by you know, the Democrats, George Soros, whoever it happens to be. Uh, and really, of course, if you look uh, at VPAP, one of the top donor donors to the Sarvis campaign was Robert Sarvis himself. I mean, <laughs> the fact that he was willing to donate so much of his money uh, toward his campaign, I really think speaks volumes about him. In addition, um, as a longtime uh, campaign staffer, I worked for a number of candidates, including uh, my hero, Dr. Ron Paul, um, I was really impressed by the amount of effort that Robert Sarvis put into his race for governor. I mean, again, he could have just taken an easy road and done nothing, uh, or next to nothing, you know, and just sort of see what happens. But, you know, he did come out many times to the Shenandoah Valley uh, to speak to folks, whether it happened to be to half a dozen or a sizable crowd. And I really, you know, I really think that's something that is very commendable for him. And so I just wanted to share with you those thoughts. <coughs> Again, I'm not voting in this process, but I just wanted to let you all know that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Josh. Uh, Robert, do you have anyone else who'd like to speak on your behalf? Uh, no, I think that's fine. W would you like to speak on your behalf? Sure. <laughs> just as hard, and uh, we'll see if uh, this this uh, election cycle we can actually do better. 
I'll, I'll be speaking again later today, so I'm not going to take up much of your time. But uh, I really appreciate you all coming out here, and uh, I'd love to have your, your support this, uh, this election thing. Thank you. Many of you were at our nomination convention uh, last election cycle where Robert received our nomination for governor. I think that was a lot more contentious than this will be. But uh, in the same vein, I do want to give people an opportunity to, to ask Robert questions uh, if, if they so choose um, for a few minutes. Um, does anyone have any questions for Robert Sarvis before we proceed to a vote? Keep in mind I'm asking people who will be voting on this are members. The press will have a chance to question Robert uh, later on. Any questions? Um, Robert? Uh, back when I ran for mayor of Virginia Beach, I raised $83,000 in five weeks, and the Libertarian Party of Virginia was nice enough to contribute $2,000 once I gave them my financial statement. So it would appear to me that, that if you're going to commit to Robert Sarvis, and we need to put our money where our mouth is. So we have about 80 some, hum, uh, James, how much do we have right now? In the treasury, 80? Uh, about 8,400. I make a motion that we contribute the whole entire 8,400 to the Robert Sarvis campaign. He's going to need at least a million dollars to kick off this campaign, at least a million. If not, it's just going to be another result. The same thing, same song and dance. You're going to have to put your money where your mouth is if you're going to support it. Um, so th that's out of order at this time. Um, it is. But we're, we're doing nominations right now. Uh, if Robert okay. receives the nomination, then that would certainly be in order. We can talk about that. But Mr. Chair, I believe uh, Mr. Dean was actually speaking about the uh, campaign of Mr. Sarvis and whether we should nominate him. So I think he should be allowed this time to talk. Well, there was no question there. There's 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 uh, motion, Mr. Sarvis, uh, motion. Then, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask the candidate how much money he plans on raising in this campaign for the, for the uh, election. As much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Um, any, any further questions for Robert? Um, Just curious where you're at in your platform. Obviously, going from governor race to uh, a national race, a little different. So, close. Um. Well, so I don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, the the, the platform is liberty. You know, and and in in every in every area of the federal government, there's just too much government. Uh, so, you know, that's that's where I start from, but in terms of if you're, if you're asking, like, my level of knowledge about federal policy or my ability to uh, talk about specific issues or what issues I'm going to talk about. Precisely, yeah. If you, if you don't hone in on the particular ones just yet or just don't. Well, you know, I think I think a lot of the same ones, I mean, uh, just the, the level of government and the, the sort of, uh, you know, the presumption of liberty that we should start with rather than presumption of government inter interference, presumption of constitutionality of government regulations. Um, so, so I think that you know taxing and spending is a huge issue, and I think that there's too much focus on taxes uh, and, and not enough focus on spending. Uh, you know, on the Sunday talk shows and in, in political uh, discourse, uh, because you know the, the the true size of government is spending, not taxes. Because you know you can deficit spend, and you have to pay that back eventually. Uh, I think obviously you know non-intervention in foreign policy. Uh, NSA spying, the drug war, all of these things are going to be worth talking about. I'm going to, you know, I'll focus on certain ones I haven't figured out exactly, but I'd love the opportunity to talk about all of them. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Laura? Um, it looks like we'll be having a lot of, a large number of congressional candidates this year. How do you plan to work with um, congressional candidates and local candidates? Yeah, my hope is, my hope is to help, you know, it's, it's not too late to, uh, to run if you're considering running, and I'd really like to get a full slate of 11 candidates. That's, that's one of the reasons I want to run, is to spend the next uh, uh, several weeks trying to find more candidates. Uh, I think we already have four or five or six 
congressional districts with candidates. And what I'd really like to do is, is from the very beginning, basically, um, you know, putting wind in their sails uh, as much as I can, uh, campaigning with them, trying to get, uh, it, you know, whenever I get media, I'd like to do a better job this time around of, uh, of, of uh, making sure everybody knows that, that we have libertarian candidates mm -hmm. in those congressional districts. Uh, so, you know, I think we can share printing uh, costs. We did a little of this with the Laura DeLone campaign, uh, doing door hangers that had her stuff on one side, my stuff on the other. Uh, just as much of that, of that as possible, just to make it easier to, for the congressional candidates because, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to fundraise as a libertarian. Uh, and, um, you know, so anything I can do to help, I, I really hope we can do that. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Bridget? Um, okay, so I think what people are concerned about is that maybe you should have measurable goals. And I, you know, I, I don't think anybody questions your ability to go out there and do it. But what I hear is that people are concerned that you don't have measurable goals as far as fundraising. Like, you should set a goal for yourself so you have something you're working <coughs> toward and figuring out how to effectively fundraise towards that goal. Mm -hmm. And then um, also with the platform for the national level, I think, too, we should, you should have a goal on what issues you're really trying to be hard-hitting about because, you know, while I do desire and believe that you could win, you know, the chances are not high that you will win, and we need to use, you know, your candidacy as a vehicle for raising awareness about ending the federal income tax, ending the federal reserve, these sort of issues. So I think having um, clear <coughs> objectives about which parts of the federal government you're going to target would be something that your campaign should probably do early on. Um, about what preparation you're going to do um, at the beginning of your campaign? Um, well, I, I, I have yet to put together a full team, and then we'll strategize. And, and anybody who's interested in helping in that process, is, 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 uh, your, your help would be very appreciated. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, hard, it's always hard to find people who are, who are experienced and expert in things like fundraising. And so that's one of the things that we you know, would really like to find. Um, so if you know people uh, who, who are experienced at that, you know, please send them my way. Um, but everything you can do to help in terms of strategy is also always help, helpful. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, I should have specified, please raise your question in the form of a question. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're out of time on this uh, agenda we're, item. We're out of time. Uh, however, um, none of the above is always an option. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak for none of the above uh, before we vote them? Mark? All right. <laughs> what I'm about to say is probably going to make me the least popular person in the room. <laughs> <Now> you are. <laughs> <laughs> but you might be none of the above. <laughs> I'm speaking today in favor of none of the above for U.S. Senate. I have learned a lot about Rob Sarvis in the last year. Certainly it is no secret that I spoke against um, running anyone for governor at our state convention last year. So did several other individuals. I was completely honest with you and with Rob. I think Rob will, will uh, agree with that. Nevertheless, when the vote did not go my way, I still made some fairly extensive contributions to Rob's campaign, including becoming a campaign bundler. <laughs> I raised Rob $1,400 at one event. 